Hey, welcome back. My name is Stranger. It's been a while, and today I'm gonna walk you through how I made a recent bootleg remix of Doja Cat's Agora Hills. If you haven't heard the track yet, you can actually find it on my SoundCloud. It's also on my YouTube channel. Just look up Agora Hills Stranger Remix. I'll just play a short clip of this track, and then we'll get right into it. Whether they like it or not, I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. I wanna brag about it. I wanna tie the knot. I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. I wanna show you. Yeah, yeah, I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. I wanna show you. Yeah, yeah, I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. My hand, you can take what I want. So yeah, that's my Gory Hills remix. You can check the full track on my SoundCloud. It's also available as a free download. I heard about this track probably a couple months ago. I decided to remix it into drum and bass. Look up the original, Agora Hills Doja Cat. It's a lot slower. And actually when I listen to the original now, it just sounds so slow. My version is almost twice as fast. And um, I think it's dope. I, every time I play it at shows, it goes off and people love it. Uh, so check it out. And I'm just going to show you the project right now. Essentially what I did was I extracted the acapellas from uh, using la, 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 .ai. Um They're a sponsor of mine, full disclosure. And they... Uh, so I'm able to extract vocals and instrumentals from lalal.ai. It's pretty clean extraction of vocals, which is like, I like about it. I also heard that FADR, Fader, Fader also has a pretty good acapella extractor too. So I'm definitely not biased towards one to the other, whatever gets you the results. But yeah, just using that, I was able to get the vocals. I just show it to original tempo, which is 123 beats per minute. Kissing and hope they cut us. Whether they like it not, I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. As you can see, it's a lot slower, but back to 170. I feel it has more groove uh, at this speed. Cut us. Whether they like it not, I wanna show you up. I wanna show you up. I wanna brag about it. And basically, let's get, get right into how I wrote this beat. Uh, Usually for this kind of thing, I want to start with some rhythm as the backbone of the groove of this track. <clears throat> so I made this drum loop here. It's a pretty basic drum and bass pattern. We call it the two-step pattern. I have a number of effects here to fatten up the drums. Let's just go through them one by one. So I believe, yeah, so I believe I have this roar here. I'm using Ableton 12 for this track just for your information. The roar is the new uh, multi-band saturation unit. Very handy. When you click this button, you can uh, have three bands. I'm only just um, using one band, one stage here. I'm adding about eight decibels of drive. Uh, a bit of compression to this uh, to the drum loop as a whole. It just I thought it just made the drums sound more crunchy. So without it, completely brings the drums to life. Um, I think I had no, I didn't do anything. Yeah, that's pretty much all I did. Everything I saw here are just uh, filter sweeps and whatnot. So ignore the other effects here. But we'll go into the the actual pattern. So. Once again, very basic drum and bass pattern. We have the hi-hats here and the kick and snare. But what's unique to the writing process of creating this drum loop here is that I'm using the new 
Um, Ableton kind of is called find similar sounds function. Essentially, I think it's an AI function where when you click the button and you swap, it finds similar sounds. So when you have a drum kit, so I have the kick, snare, hi-hat here. There's this little button here. Let me just cl close up on it. Um, you'll see that there's this little uh, squiggly button. That's that's what we call the show uh, s or similar sample swap button, right? If you click on here, you get these two arrows. And when you click the right arrow, it swaps your drum kit. So I was just using this and I just stumbled upon a really good set of drums. So it's cr this function is crazy because you can easily create new breaks with the click of button. All you do is you have the pattern, you select the four sounds you want, kick, snare, hi-hat, maybe a ride cymbal, and then you click the button. Sometimes it takes a minute to load. See what I mean? It's like instant new breaks with the click of a button, which is completely insane. So I know many of you are at the beginning of your music production journey. In today's digital age, creating a following and getting your music out there is crucial. The era when record labels held all the power is over. And now countless independent artists are making a name from themselves with a solid social media strategy. This brings me to why I think Skillshare's new learning paths could be a game changer for you. Learning paths are a curated sequences of video classes designed to help you master a specific skill. For instance, the social media expression created for Instagram and TikTok learning path has been invaluable to me. It offers a series of classes to provide a comprehensive guide for those unsure where to start with their social media marketing. It offers a series of classes that provide a comprehensive guide for those unsure where to start with their social media marketing. From decoding the algorithms of TikTok and Instagram to crafting engaging content, this learning path equips you with the essentials to kickstart your social media presence. For those unfamiliar, Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes in various creative and entrepreneurial fields. I'm excited to share that the first 500 people that use my link below will get one month free trial of Skillshare. It's a fantastic opportunity to start exploring and expanding on your creative skills. And hey, I'd love to hear about your progress and see what you've created after diving into these classes. Let's build a community of creative independent artists together. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting our music production community. Now, if you like a particular, like let's say we like the snare here, we can actually click this lock button so that when we swap it, the snare stays intact. So that's the snare we have. If we click this swap button again, it'll change everything except the snare. Right, let's try it again. Right. You can also use uh, swap singular sounds. For example, maybe we want to switch this hi hat, right? So we could just click the little swap button here and just change only the hi hat. Super handy. So that was the process that I used to create and discover this drum loop. Is just to using the swap button until you find a good combination of uh, drum sounds. But I'm gonna undo that so we can get back to our original drum kit. Okay, so that was the basic drum kit. I then added an additional hi-hat layer on top. So a lot of my production is influenced by kind of hip hop and kind of trap or rap production. So the hi-hat uh, pattern here is kind of in, inspired by the little kind of hi-hat rolls in kind of um, modern rap music. Especially this final th three here. You can see the button here, if I can 
the, this final three here is kind of what gives it that kind of like let trill, I guess. That that could get a kick at. All right, so does I just thought by adding these kind of little hi hats, it just gives the entire drum groove more groove. So here is the let's hear the drums together. As opposed to without these, it just sounds a bit kind of plain. Oh, let me just uh, mute those hi hats. You see how it sounds much more cooler with those added hi hats. It's little details like that is what makes your drum groove unique and interesting. So that's the drum groove of the track. Pretty, pretty basic, I would say, but gets the job done. Now, now that we have the drums, after I, I thought about, okay, so what was the vibe of this track, right? I'm tr tr trying to listen because when I remix tracks, I kind of want to kind of respect the original, listen to the kind of the content in the acapella and see what, what kind of emotions or feeling does this draw, does this give me, right? It's got this kind of bouncy kind of vibe and almost kind of an intimate kind of vibe. So right when I was listening to this, I was kind of leaning into that kind of vibe and thought that an 808 would probably make sense for, especially for the sub bass, something bouncy is what I was going for, right? So that, this is the 808 here. We'll go through the pattern momentarily, but uh, before we even get into the pattern, let's go through, because this is a custom designed 808 bass and I'm using the new synth of choice, which is Minimal Audio's Current. Essentially, all it is is the sub oscillator here. And what I like about the hot sub oscillator in Current is that it has a little, this little partials parameter here. So right now, we're showing the root note, but it also adds additional harmonics on top, which makes your sub bass more audible so if we remove the partials which is still not bad right but when you add the partials it makes the sub bass more audible especially great if you want your bass to translate across multiple sound systems not to mention they have this knock parameter in the uh, sub bass that gives us an attack. And you can control the length of that attack. So that helps make the 808 sound a little more punchy. And I believe that's like, yeah. And finally I have an amplitude envelope that just ensures the 808 trails up because an 808 doesn't play at full volume all the way. It usually decays, meaning the volume is sent uh, gradually um, gets quieter, right? I always like to see what the, an 808 looks like visually. It's, um, Sometimes uh, a bit satisfying to see what it looks like. And that's a nice sounding bass. It looks good too. If it looks good, sometimes it does mean, it does, may mean it sounds good too. All right, that, that's the 808 sound. And then finally, the pattern. Now, I actually don't recall the 
the uh, scale that this song was written. So I'm going to have to go into my chords and remind myself. It looks like it was written in G sharp minor, if that's correct. Yeah, G sharp minor. Okay, so I, I'm just trying to jog my memory. And what did I do? Well, how did I come up with this bass line? I believe I was just playing, again, a lot of the times it's just vibing off the acapella. So if you... Yeah, so I was just listening to this and just thinking about, okay, what, what kind of... You just play along, right? You just... You, just, you kind of just play along to the melody, knowing what key you're in, right? So just listening to the vocal, I, I was hearing... I suppose I was just hearing this bass line going... I'll just play an octave few octaves up so you can hear the actual melody. I kind of use that, that kind of bass line progression a lot in my music actually. It just made sense for this track. Now the pattern here, uh, this is a unique pattern that I've used over the years. Essentially, it's kind of like a, I'm trying to think of uh, the closest thing you can relate it to in modern music. Um, probably, yeah, it's, the pattern is kind of, I guess it's inspired by Jersey Club, except it's just missing the very first note here. So Jersey Club is that bump, 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 bump pattern, right? Which is this. But it's, but it's let me just mute everything else. Right? Jersey Club is inspired, kind of like groove from house music. Uh, house music is 4-4, four, four, right? Where Jersey Club takes that very last two beats, instead of, and instead of having two kicks, they can bring it down to three kicks by doing this. So this kind of bass line pattern was inspired by the Jersey Club rhythm. I just muted uh, the very first note, and you have this. This last one here, there was supposed to be a note here, but to add a little more groove, I removed this third note here, just to give it make it seem a bit more different. That's where kind of the interest and groove comes in. I like making things slightly different. So it's not like a computer generated rhythm. This one is slightly different. It's missing that uh, fourth note. Okay, so that's the drum and bass groove. Let's uh, let's hear it without the vocals. Right. So that's pretty pretty basic, but sometimes music is about simplifying the ideas, makes things a little more impactful. I think. Um, and then it's about adding texture and, and kind of uh, depth to your music. So that's where adding pads come in. So let's bring the vocals back in. Actually, up here.
So these were the original backing chords in the uh, Gory Hills uh, track. I think what I did was I kind of took inspiration of that and wrote my own chords using, uh, what did I use? I used Analog Lab. It's a simple preset, it's just using this hybrid voice preset, which is uh, part of this synth. Okay, and these are the pads here. Now, there's a number of effects here to make it sound the way it does. Let me just turn it all off and then go through them one by one. So this is how it sounds like originally. Okay. And then I added Portal, which is a new effect I've been getting into thanks to a uh, friend producer of mine that goes by Adukin. He put me on this when he came over from the UK over to Toronto. We had a production session with him and uh, Corrupted Mine and Dante Rose. And he, he was really big on using Portal, which is kind of a granulizer, a grain, a grain uh, synthesizing effect. Essentially what it does is it takes small bits of the audio and kind of twists and manipulates the pitch and timing of it to create something new. So I found this preset, like a fourth dotted shape pen, and it kind of gives this kind of glitchy vibe to the pad. So here's without it. And here's with it. I kind of like that chopped up. If you can hear, there's these little pauses, this chopped up vibe. The first time I heard that recently was actually a New Jeans uh, K-pop track. I think they did that in Weather. I think it was on Super Shy. The pads in the background have this really subtle dropout every, like every other bar or something. I thought this kind of interesting creative choice to actually drop out the pad for like half a second and I thought it, it but it made but without it it just seemed kind of normal but when you add that those kind of dropouts it kind of makes it a little bit more unique and then I just added some EQing to this and OTT to fatten it up There's also a, uh, I believe there's a filter sweep here creating some kind of uh, movement in the track. Yeah, there's a filter here on the actual group actually. I'll just disable it for now. So that's the pad without the filter. Um, in terms of how I came up with these chords, that's another good question because it all kind of happens in the moment. Most of the time, chords, the way I write chords is they're based on the bass line. So remember our bass line was here. It went from... Uh, it went from E, F sharp, G sharp, D sharp. So I believe what I did was kind of use the bass notes here as the root note of my chord and then built on top of it, right? So what was it again? Um, yeah, it starts with E, F sharp. So there, there's an E, F sharp, there's the G sharp, and I forgot what was the, and the D sharp. Essentially, I, I think it, there's probably some seventh chords here some ninth chords is that no that's a seventh chord
Big up Oreo. Yeah, basically what I did was I first found the chords. They probably weren't in this kind of voicing. And I was just moving the notes up and down. Because once you have the chord, right? Say, I don't, I don't remember. What was this chord? Guys, I have a uh, grandma memory right now. But E, so E. So. So B, so I'm trying to show you the original chord and how I... Oh. Yeah, so this is the original voicing. That's a ninth chord, right? So one, three, five, seven, nine. Uh, if you just hit scale, it's every other note, right? If you hide all the notes, it's every note of that scale. So we're in G sharp minor to play this uh, E, is this an E minor ninth? It's skipping every other note essentially, right? And that's how it came out with this chord. And then once you have the chord, you can play with the voicing, meaning you can move this note an octave down, this one an octave down. Essentially what I'm trying to do is, I'm, I'm trying to make it so the notes are closer together in a range. Uh, that is kind of a technique in chord progression is that you want all the notes in your progression kind of in a similar range. It, it just makes it sound more cohesive, which is why I moved this down here like that. Then sometimes in my chord progression, the first thing I hear is usually the top note. So I look for what what is the top melody saying? So I was, oh, so it's saying this. Dun, 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 dun. So when I'm writing chords, I'm also listening. What is the melody saying here? So this is a good indication. And I like that kind of melody. So that that tells me, okay, I have the voicing correct because I'm hearing that melody on top. So that's the chords. And finally, once I had the chords, let me just uh, bring the vocals back. Yeah, so once I had the chords, I felt like the, it was just missing one more element and it was more, I felt like it needed some kind of high melody to kind of take the listener somewhere. So I came out of this lead here. I was going for some kind of, I kind of, it's kind of a hip hop slash 80s vibe with this lead uh, it's just a sound played with pigments with a bunch of reverb i added portal here as well for that chopped effect oh. just like that kind of choppy sound with it with the melody it's really... How did I come with this again? I was just playing on the keyboard, just finding a sound. I don't know what it is. Sometimes you just find it. Yeah, I call it magic, man. Sometimes wherever it comes from, um, it just it just fits this track perfectly. Uh, it was the m missing piece that tied the entire track together. And essentially what I did was instead of playing each note individually, I first found the notes and then I disabled the notes and then I'm using note expression, which allows me to do these kind of slides into the notes, which is what you're hearing. Once again, I'm leaning into that kind of 
hip hop approach to, or like modern rap music approach to writing drum and bass, which is why I'm using these note slides. I just like the groove that that provides. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then what I did was I grouped the pad sounds and the lead together. I added this, this kind of, this filter sweep with this filter. I love the Arteria M12 filter. There's something very analog and fat about this filter. And all I'm doing is I'm, there's this little filter sweep going up to create movement in the track, right? And finally, right before it drops into the next part of the track, I'm using Killer Hearts tape stop to create a record stop. Right? Love using record stops. It's a great way to exit one part of the track into the next. I'm different about you. Love it when you hit and smack too, baby. Right? Um, so that's this part of the track, which is the main part of the track. And then I have this other section here, which I call the Jersey section. All it is, is I'm stripping down the drums and I'm kind of leaning into that Jersey club kick rhythm here. Um, I believe I have a kick as well, mirroring that, so here. I take out the snares on hi-hats. I think I add a clap here. And I bring the hi-hats in. So that's all it is, this verse section, I wanted to strip down the drum and bass elements and kind of lean into that Jersey rhythm so that there's two kind of sections in the, this track that goes A and B. So that goes back into the drum and bass section in the hook. I uh, just had a riser here. So, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Very simple production. But that that's my approach. I know there some producers just love having like 50 to 100 tracks in their music. I definitely respect that approach. I don't know what it is. I this is how call it simple, call it minimal, but that's this is my approach. Oh, there's one more piece here in the Jersey part. Pain, but I need this shit. What I did was I bounced the chords into audio. So these chords that we were looking at earlier. I bounced it to audio and to, to do this kind of chopped thing. I was as, as you can see, there's these kind of chops here. I'll just play it to you in solo. I just thought that kind of was a good way to kind of flip the entire chords and kind of make it sound different. This technique was influenced by my buddy Adukin again. He, what he do, does is he bounced, bounces the audio after running it through portal that might he might do some chops so tipping my hat to that technique there shouts out to him a duke and you can find him on soundcloud so i kind of like how that sounds especially during the jersey part Another thing I love using is uh, little uh, scratch sounds and whatnot. So you, you'll find, if I can find it uh, over here. 
little sounds like this right before like a, a little right be, in a pause be my right. nice way to switch up again and yeah the track once i established a and b which is the drum and bass in the jersey part the song just kind of wrote itself i had all the parts to create the track and it's really easy once you have the acapella because the acapella kind of guides the arrangement of the track. So you have the verse, or I mean, I think you have the hook here. And you have the uh, uh, you have the verse here, another hook, verse, and then hook. So all you had to do is take your A, B sections and mirror the arrangement. So the drum and bass part was here, Jersey part was here, drum and bass here, and so forth. So the track kind of... Uh, writes itself that way and then i just added an intro here of the pads and lead sound with the filter sweep right before the vocals enter i think the intro chords are slightly different i made it different just so when it drops the chords there's a, a bit of an emotion change kind of becomes more uplifting when these purple chords come in let me just play it to you That's pretty much it. A um, few things in terms of the mix. I noticed I had track spacer here. What I did was I side chained this to the acapella. And I'm only, the ratio is just 12.5, slightly ducking any um, common frequencies with the vocal to make space for the vocal. So that's ducking the um, or attenuating the frequencies on the chords and lead sound to give room for the vocal using track spacer. Um, and yeah, I think that's all there is to this track. Um, essentially, that's that's the gist of it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this. Uh, there are a few comments when I posted this track. Someone asked. Uh, they were just really compelled um, or just inspired listening to the track and just how it just has all the essential elements and nothing less and nothing more. And his comment was that if you add one more element to this track, it'll be too much. If you remove one track, one element, it'll break apart. So that that is pretty much summarizes my approach is, is that finding what exactly what it's, it needs. It's kind of like the Min minimalist minimalist approach to producing is that use only the elements needed to get the message across and i think this track was a great demonstration of that and um yeah if you guys enjoyed this uh, make sure you hit the like vi like button subscribe to my channel if you want to support my channel it'd be awesome if you can check out deviantaudio.com uh we have a number of sample packs preset packs and Ableton kits to help you along your journey. Uh, if you're just starting out, uh, the jungle kit or liquid kits might be good because if you have Ableton, that is, because they allow you to just create jungle or a liquid with a few clicks to the button. The rollers kit is also similar. It's a little bit more modern sounding drum and bass, very popular. Uh, Tirk here also made a similar Ableton kit called Rough and Ragged. This one's a lot more of a beast. There's tons of drum loops and, and custom Ableton instruments here. So if you're interested, check that out. Um, my Gnarly Serum Pack is also very popular as well. If you want like foghorns or like nasty bass sounds. Lots of sounds here. OG Jungle, Acid Lab, Hybrid Breaks, Fragments. All those have really good breakbeat samples, drum and bass samples, jungle samples. So check it out. It's all down in the links below. Of course, if you want to hear the full thing of the Yogora Hills remix, you can find it on my SoundCloud as well as on my Spotify. Just look up Stranger on Spotify or it's also on YouTube. So I appreciate you guys tuning in, watching this stream. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And until the next video, stay safe, stay creative and peace out.